got a bit of a different one for you today. We're on the Thames, but not as you know it. This is the Ancestral Thames, or the riverbed of the Ancestral Thames, which once ran through Essex. Let me set the scene for you. Over the summer, you may have visited our Hands on History exhibition at the National Maritime Museum. If you did, you would have seen a piece of artwork entitled Portal to a Land Before Prometheus by the sculptor and artist Billy Bond. Portal is an installation, approximately two by one metres in size, comprised of ancestral Thames deposits, rocks and fossils, and London Thames detritus, fired earth, coal, man-made objects and bones. It speaks of a land before the involvement of man and after man. Of this work, Billy says, this work aims to encourage the viewer to consider a time before humans, a time before capitalist detritus. The fluvial erosion of the past is presented as two simple earth-shaped circles, each one representing its time in history through contrasting colours, evoking frost and fire, and materials of nature and the man-made. Since exhibiting with us, Billy stayed in touch, as we will no doubt be working on future projects together, and as such invited me to visit her quarry canvas, the ancestral Thames in Essex. So here we are. The conveyor belt you see on your left is a two kilometre travelator of stones and gravel. The intervention of man again, as this is a working quarry, it's an amazing place, as you're about to see. Here we are down in the bottom of the quarry, heading to the riverbed of the ancestral Thames. But what do we mean by that? Once upon a time, around 450,000 years ago to be exact, the course of the river Thames was quite different. Wivenhoe History Group explain it thus. During the early Ice Age, the Thames flowed to the north of London, through North Essex, passing Colchester, Wivenhoe and Clacton-on-Sea, and further on to Suffolk, Norfolk, and out across what is now the Southern North Sea to become a tributary of the Rhine. In the bed of the river, substantially thick deposits were laid down what is called the Kesgrave Sands and Gravel. These old Thames gravels contain a variety of unusual pebbles from as far away as North Wales, proving that, at the time, the Thames and its tributaries must have been a huge river system draining the Welsh mountains and bringing their characteristic volcanic rocks into the Thames Basin. OK, let's see what Billy's got to tell us about the quarry and everything in it. So you are now standing on the bed of the Ancestral Thames. This is the bottom of it. This is amazing. So this is the bottom so of the Thames. This is about a million years ago, plus. Wow. So where did it go? What happened? What? It... So it, the, the root of it was blocked by the Anglian Glacier 450,000 years ago. The glacier came down gradually from the north, yeah. bringing with it debris on, on route. Yeah. And as it melted, it did deposited all that um, glacial debris and blocked the route of the Thames, I think up towards um, St Albans somewhere, blocked it, redirected it to where it is now. And then this became a dry riverbed or just little, little rivers then instead of the great huge yeah. river. Wow. It was. <laughs> That's incredible. So this is the bed of the ancestral Thames. So where the diggers are up there and you've got that dark line. Yeah. That is topsoil. That's where the, the organic matter is. Yeah. Then you've got about three or four metres of the orange glacial chalky boulder clay deposited by the Anglian Glacier 450,000 years ago. Wow. <laughs> and then below that, well, it's not very clear here, you've got the gravels and sands from the ancestral Thames. And so then, yeah and then this dark layer that we can see here yep. is where they've dug beneath that to the london clay just to dig the drainage um, trenches that is an incredible cross section so top thin line is topsoil then you've got the chalky bold no, the, the boulder clay, boulder yep, clay. also known as till, or till. Or spill, they call it. and the next one down is the is the gravels and sands gravels and sands the next one that they've dug out and put on the Bed there. Bed there. Yeah, that's, that's the London. That is the London. London clay. clay, and then this is the bed. And this is the bed of the ancestral. Wow. The bottom of it. The bottom. So you can really see there the layers. That is incredible. 
so that is London clay up. There are the other layers, topsoil, chalky, bouldery stuff, sandy stuff, gravelly stuff. And you get down here. And this is the bed of the ancestral Thames. These are all have all migrated from somewhere else, all these rocks. So they've come from as far as Wales, Cornwall even, over millions of years. Wow. And you'll find you'll find some igneous rocks. So that's Oh gosh, rocks. I remember that from school. <laughs> that's about one of the yeah, only sedimentary yeah. igneous and yeah, Igne yeah, it's igneous rock. Igneous rock. So there we go. I so, and I it. can't remember if it was formed by the ash coming out, or there's also the stuff that's formed from underneath. Okay. Breccia. I think Breccia or Breccia. I never know how to pronounce it. Breccia. So this it rock Breccia. has come from Cornwall. Yep. <laughs> and it's, the black stuff I think is toluene, and where it's cracked and then filled in with quartz in between. Yeah. Breccia, I think. Oh yeah. You can see all those little exploded breccia. So that's that's exploded underneath the ground. Wow. See that's a lovely bit of quartz. Ah ha ha. See, and that's probably from Wales. Wow. <laughs> Veined quartz. Veined quartz. Right, right, so that is a flint that's been heated up to a high temperature. Now, there are pudding stones that are made out of flint. Oh, Red on the that. inside. And wow. So, what? The outside. And it's exploded. There's a, something probably been driven over. Yeah, yeah. But that is. <laughs> that's really cool. Oh, I love that red. Oh, no, so that's probably from Brittany. Okay. So via the Midlands. So it's been on a real. Wow. Brittany via the Midlands. Okay, we've got Cornwall, did you say? And we've got. Where else did we say? Wales. Yeah, Wales. South Wales and North Wales. I'm not sure, but it's. See, when they're wet, they look totally different. Ah, uh, I can see lots of red yeah. flecks in there. Yeah, that's probably iron oxide. So this is the London clay, so shall I just touch a bit of it? Yeah. Wow. Oh, God, that really is. It's a different colour, isn't it, than the stuff you see on the Thames? Yeah. It's... And, it, and it'll smell differently as well. Okay, let's have a smell. Hmm. Clean. Clean. Do Found a fossil. Right there. Is it? Yeah, it is. There you go. That would have been a little root or a burrow or something. So it is. So there we go. More pie right there. So these would have been roots. These are little bits of roots of mangrove tree. I think. You think? Yeah. I'll check it. Oh, there's more. A little bit there. <laughs> But if you're lucky, you find, um, no, you find some little nodules that look Oh, okay, little round. Do you mean the yeah, round that's flint? that's where sometimes the nodules you find little bits of uh, lobster or crab. So that's a bit of flint. That's flint, and that's been in the sea and hit other flints. I see. It was, was the sea at one point as well. Yeah. That looks like a piece of quartz again. Nice and stripy. Yeah, it is. It's nice, isn't it? As you can see, the weather is keeping us on our toes. Speaking of which, fossils and stones were not the only thing that Billy found in the quarry. Last week, a surprise well made itself known to the diggers. The well was full of mid-20th century artefacts, likely from residents in the World War II Nissen huts when they finally left to move into new accommodation. Stay tuned to see what Billy found in the well. Some of it is incredibly evocative. 
Let's leave the bed of the ancestral Thames now and head up to ground level to see what we can find up there. Are we going up there? That's where we're... So we're going up to the top, which is actually, so is the top actually ground level, normal ground level, because we've obviously been in a quarry. Um, so we're going to look at what's going on up here. And there are archaeologists working up here. So this is where we might spot something, or even if we don't say, this is where Billy's found bits and bobs up here. Um, all these bits of concrete, these are old airfield um, runway, runway strips of concrete. And this, I'm guessing, is something to do with this airfield stuff behind. So we've come up to, oh, we just said we hope the heavens won't open, but they <laughs> are very much just about to, or they are opening. Um, we've come up to the top of the site now, which is uh, come ground level. And so this area behind me is where archeologists were working. And I think they've packed up and gone now, but that is 30 centimeters down there. That's like medieval kind of settlement layer. Um, and they've made some interesting finds in there. So we're okay to walk, aren't we? Yeah, I think We've so. got, it's a bit, it's a bit squishy, but I think we can, uh, we can do it. So Billy's been metal detecting in that spot there, and has had some hammered coins, um, Henry II, I think, and an Ed, Edward the first, first, yeah. Um, so I will stick those up on the screen so you can see what she's found. But yeah, pretty cool that where we were a minute ago is what, mil millions? One million, two million? Yeah. Millions of years old. And then up here, we're kind of jumping forward in time through the levels. Right, let's see. So this is where we were just a moment ago. This is a view from the top. Wow, so we, dr we were driving around there and then, so the well was just in that corner, wasn't it? Just, yeah, yeah on that bit there, you can see, oh yeah, there are remnants of, oh yeah, the bricks and exactly. So the well, God, that's really weird looking at it like yeah. that, isn't it? When you look down on it and you just see it's just been. You see we're so much higher up. So you can see the other side there of the quarry. Oh which yeah. It's the same height as us virtually, so all this is you know a good 10 meters down i'd say it's um it's really a strange experience feeling looking down on it yeah. isn't it really it's different vast, from but it kind of also feels even though it's like vast it also feels like tiny <laughs> like you know so far so good okay i'm through so with our surface, no, it's all right. Oh look, bit of pottery already, but this is oh, modern. Yeah, so this bit here was definitely where there was something post-war here. That looks like a cold cream or something. Okay, so around this area, there were Nissan huts and people moved into them. After the war. Oh, post-war, they moved into them from... There were definitely buildings here. From where they were living in London, what, were bombed out or? Yeah, possibly, or even Or couldn't afford, okay. Um, so temporary housing until the council houses were built. I see, yeah. Also what you'll find here though, now it's rained and the topsoil's been taken off, you, this is where you'd norm, you can see easier Neolithic flint tools. Right, let's get the metal detector out and see what we can find just over the brow of this mud pile. So we've just had a signal here. I'm guessing it's a bullet. Billy thinks it's a bullet. I'm hoping it's a bullet. Or a little lead thing. I saw something. Oh. Oh. There we go. Combelio or something. Right there. That was my first um, signal that then Billy kindly dug out for me. Oh, right. 
To save you many hours of painful searching in the rain, let's cut straight to the finds table and see what else set off our detector today. There's a very apt find that could only have been for Billy. So here we go, do not remove. Connect electrical connection, I think. Here's one of our finds. It has got a proper bee on it. Isn't it brilliant? That, that is... That would have been a, bu a buckle? I, well, it looks like it's, it went on some leather or something, doesn't it? Maybe, yeah, a, yeah. maybe a satch, a bag or something. Oh, that's fantastic. But that was someone's prized thing. So there you go. I've got some pudding stone. And yeah. you've got the bee for Billy. <laughs> I love that. Look at that. So that is, I don't think I filmed us getting this one out of the ground because I think it no, started to rain. <laughs> but anyway, so you never know until you get home and you've scrubbed it. Yeah, exactly. I imagine that went on a leather bag. Yeah, That's what I think. Like a satchel or a work bag or. It did have great, maybe the green was just um, the oxidation. Yep. Oh, that's, so what else that got? looks like that is a nail. This is from our... This is the bit you've done. <laughs> oh no, up. but I've, I've got some little bits in my pocket yes, as have. well. Yeah. Let's make our way through to Billy's studio now to see her work and find out what she discovered in that mid-20th century well. Also, check out this Hertfordshire pudding stone that Billy gifted me. My father's family originated in Hertfordshire, so this stuff is really meaningful to me. These are my finds right. from the quarry. Okay. So this so, is before I knew what I was doing with the metal detector. Yes. So <laughs> I recognise of, some of this kind of stuff. I mean, some of it might be really old, but you yeah. don't know. I mean, that's obviously yeah. come off a tractor. I've got no right. idea what that is. Bits of plough bit and... Um, that's obviously off something for a fire hydrant, yeah. maybe because it's red. Big old nails, that looks quite interesting. That yeah. looks like that might have scraped something. But yeah. Bits and bobs. Bits and bobs. Bits and bobs. Bobs and bits. This is, this is all the lead I've found. Oh wow, so this is where we were detecting today. This is these yeah. fields yeah. and... Yeah, all around Oh, and a bit of so shrapnel. Um, musket balls. Oh, that's a little weight. Oh, I love finding weight. Oh, that could be a medieval so that, one, that couldn't could it? That be quite old. And apparently, I saw something the other day with a hole through it. That was something to do with weight as oh, well. Oh, okay, yeah. That's so something. that's something, I think, medieval. I think I saw it on the finds thing. And I thought, oh, I've got something oh, okay, on there. Okay, on Thames Did it just go in here? Yeah, anywhere in there. And then big lumps of lead shrapnel, yeah. but again, I don't know if that's old I or think, war yeah, stuff. Yeah, or like flashing stuff. So when they fix roofs and fix things, could be. they use lead. Yeah, could be. And then this is my World War Two shrapnel. Oh, it's a bit of fuse timer. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's cool. You could get that polished up, but well, if you want to. Yeah, that's a bit of nose cone, isn't it? Yeah, apparently that's the dial for yeah. the setting the height at which it explodes. Okay. Up. And there's a bit of lethal looking shrapnel. And then this is, because it was a racetrack as well, right. that's obviously a weight for a wheel, you oh, know, for right. balancing the wheels. Yeah, yeah. And it's got, I think it's got D on it, so maybe for Dunlop, oh, number, yeah. number two. Oh, wow. So it was a racetrack, it was an airfield. Yeah. And it was also the helicopter base for Essex Police. Oh, fine. These, yeah, these are all the World War II bullets. bullets. A few Lots of 303 bullets. Yeah, bits and pieces. These all look like 303. I don't know. Someone said it could be M2 Browning, Browning or Elephant oh, Gun Rounds, but I, okay. I don't know. Oh, that's like a watch winder. Yes, or... I think I think that is a watch winder, and then I think that is actually part of a watch. So oh I don't yeah, know if it looks that's like it. Come yeah, out. but you can see there's a bit of gilding in yeah, there. It doesn't look like, like the watch. middle of a watch. Yeah, where the mechanism it? goes in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What's that? <laughs> that's just a door latch. I love. Oh yeah, of course it is. 
just the door latch because there were buildings there so they've obviously yeah. had a lot i love it though <laughs> i love that and that's on the field where the archaeologists are now uh, that, but that was on the top on the there top. were two buildings a few buildings up there then this is my favorite find so that is oh. from a print block of a flat tank <gasps> First oh, I can see it. Motorbike. It's a motorbike. Oh, that's so cool. So that must have been used as someone's, I don't know, badge or something, maybe during a, a race and it's ended up yeah. there. Uh, but I'm going to actually try printing from it. So That's very cool. I couldn't believe it when I found oh, it. I love I it. Just that's thought, oh, it's so of, yeah. of the site, of the, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's, these are the medieval bits of pottery from... From the okay, side, that's Sandy Shelley ware. Yeah, is, it, is yes, that or, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, the, those bits are Sandy Shelley, and there's there. post medieval yeah. red ware. Oh, that's yeah. a lovely bit there. Beautiful. And that I'm not sure what that is, but that's nice. That's actually got a little glazed surface. It could be old, but who knows? Yeah. Then I've got weird bits that I don't know what they are. It's they came up on the metal detector, but it's just. Hmm. It's quite light and it had a silver bit in it and this bit did came up but again it's oh, light so I don't know what it is. It looks like hmm. a mixture of material so it could have been oh, something does, that had been melted it? or That's really light. And here are my coins. Oh my goodness me, these are in amazing. Order of age. Yeah. So that one I think is eleven fifty nine. Right. Um That's your I can't Henry. Remember what, that's the Henry the Second. That's the Edward the First possibly. Wow, look at that it is in such good condition. Oh, look at that, it's amazing. That really is a great hammer. It's not coin. worn at all, is it really? Not really. I mean, some little patches, but that, you know, the central bit there. Yeah. And then that is silver but has absolutely nothing on it. Yeah. It's a nice bit of silver. Yeah. But it's. How funny. Absolutely nothing on it. So just a coin blank. Mm. And then this one, I think, is William, a William the Third farthing. It's got a date, 1690 something, but I can't yeah. see it. It's so difficult to see. I've to oh, I can see the bus there. It in the right light. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that does look like a William. 1929. So, yeah, yeah that's George. Then... I remember 1939 I okay. think that one is and then, there, and then you see then you've got oh you get so 1988 mm -hmm. and then 2008 these are all my flint tools oh I like these Oopsie. so some might be a bit suspect <laughs> I mean that is just a maybe a core yeah but these these definitely you can see that one's broken but yeah it, it's so fine the work on it yeah um, along that edge yeah you can see there and yeah. that, that's the lovely one that's the one i found the other day that and you can lovely. see it so it's a nice scraper i think mm -hmm. that one again i found just sitting on the surface oh that's a lovely one isn't it wow yeah that one's a nice nice one as well this one's totally different, but it's mm. definitely been worked has, both sides and really got the flat. And... Yeah, but it's a, it's a different type of flint, so that could be really old. Mm. Don't know. God, they're great, aren't they, these? Ooh, nice buttons. So that one is from an Essex family, Whittam. Wow. I've got okay. it written down somewhere, I can't remember. So that's Whitten. quite local. It's a livery button. Is it? Um, now, what is it? Not Warner, it was, I can't remember. It was a double barreled name. Okay. That um, is from Paris. But I, I don't know that. what it is. Yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah. I recognise the logo there. That that's is really got pretty. Gold on it. I know, that's really pretty. It's like a latch of something. Or... It does, doesn't it? Like lift it. Yeah. There. Maybe. Yeah. And then these are the bits that I think possibly could be really old because I'm sure that's got a bit of silver inlay. Oh, so that's the, the bit you were that's, talking about. Yeah, see how thin it is? Yeah. And there's another bit there. So it's come off of something. It must have coated oh, something. Oh, yeah, I can see there it is really yeah. thin. It's got... Yeah. These are all my well finds. Okay, so, so this is... Yeah. 
So there's oh, there, in the big container there are all the shoes from the well, all the old leather shoes. Wow. That I've... There's a great bottle collection. So you found this um, foot warmer in the well? Yep, that wow. was there. Wow. And that bottle, I mean, you think that was thrown down a well yeah, and yet it, it stayed hard. But I mean, lots of things were smashed. But all these bottles, that old boots bottle. Oh yeah, I've got one in my bathroom. <laughs> I love them. Uh, but the thing that interests me the most is the medical stuff that's oh, been thrown down there. Okay. So, Look at all these poison yeah. bottles. Were they all in the well? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And this, I think you've seen me, these are little hypodermic Ooh, needles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the days when they sterilised and reused the same ones. Yeah. <gasps> wow. Oh, my it took goodness. took me a while to was... clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Um, and a thermometer in here. So you think this is all 1950s? 1950s. 1950s, yeah, I reckon. Uh, wow. And the reason I've come to that conclusion is mm -hmm. this Brill Cream bottle, uh, which is unopened, although the Brill Cream's gone green. I don't think they ever made a green one. Yeah. But this design bottle is from 1949. Uh, so it's definitely okay. post-war, this. And then another thing that confirmed the date yeah. is a broken bit of pottery with Newhall Staffordshire, oh, but the yeah. style of the print, which is in one of these things here, is from the 50s. Oh, so it's okay. definitely now, I'm, that's why I'm making the conclusion that all this is from when they emptied the Nissen huts. Made in England, everything's British, it's even got Essex County Council on one, oh, of, the, uh, one of the thermometers that I found. Where did that one come from? It's just That's from up there. And this is a sterilising unit. Wow. So they would have, it's electric, and they would have filled that up with water and sterilised the instruments like this. But that was the only oh, instrument yeah, of I course. found. Oh, yeah, of course. It's a clamp. It's really hard to find them because they rust. They yeah, usually well, just... yeah, that's, I was surprised because I thought they would have been yeah. kind of steel. Uh, but the weird thing is, I also found, because they were sort of, kitchen stuff as well there's a yeah. meat there's oh, a, a meat, meat grinder yeah it's a mincer <laughs> i know oh. so you start you're starting to build this story up of oh so in this box here that's just full of shoes full of the old leather oh, shoes that gosh. i've been photographed and recording but i mean some of these bottles still have their little corks in and this are the different clays that i've been experimenting oh. with so this is the chalky boulder clay which yeah. i've been mixed with water take sieving taking out all the big stuff and is that there that yeah is that mixed what you with, made so that's mixed with sand to act as like an aggregate to then create this wow. so i've used a willow armature so i'm trying not to oh, use I any man-made oh and i can see this. your oh no they're, they're a kidney one of those that's, that's thingies the, isn't it serrated yeah tools i thought it was your thumbprint at first no, no, great. That, well, <laughs> yeah yeah so this is rory wow and um but what i love about you know because normally i work with really fine clay processed clay the whole idea is me not to do any firing at all so i'm building it like a tr traditional you know my heart really it's fantastic and he's got a fa a real face of like a a young soldier hasn't he don't you uh, think yeah yeah see it'd be great to when i show it somewhere you yeah. know have no story behind it apart from the fact it's this oh and see what people season, make of it yeah. i think he looks immediately i think of like a yeah. world war ii yeah. a really young chap well he's got that sort go, of he has Short got that yeah hairdo. going off to war it's his, his expression as well though he's kind of serious isn't he but that's it's fantastic my ambition is is if i can create a strong enough armature is to do because he's stuffed the head part is stuffed with straw as well is yeah. to do a full size figure yeah um but the logistics of doing it and get because the weight of clay is so heavy right so i'm experimenting with some new materials to to do that wow so yeah you've got a bit of everything in here are they cast? They're all cast they're heads, all aren't cast, they? Yeah. The I originally did, see that was for my masters when I was doing representations of the self. So that was right. me. Wow. Um, but then using highly polished colours. It's called mon monochromatic masks. Right. And each face, although it's the same cast, looks different when it's in a different colour. Yeah, it really Because colour, it, it creates an emotive response. And depending on what the colour is, you get a different 
Yeah. I spilled this from it. Fed pan. Oh, lovely. Oh, yeah. What is HM it? government <gasps> issue. That is cool. So Imagine this sitting is sitting on that, eh? It's a bit cold. A bit cold on the old body. Is this from. So this is all, this is from, all from the, the Nissan well. Nuts. Well, okay. Well, from, from the well. From the well, which we think of the, from the Nissan. So, so there, there was a medic. Uh, so I found out that there was a me like a medical hut. I was going to say. District nurse used to come to, right. I think, once a week. Or so whatever. people lived in the Nissan huts and then there was a medical hut. So they had on site. Yes. Like once a week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how. Oh, so yeah. And these look. Look at them. Oh. Are they great? So they were little lamps. Wow. How, and how lamps. did you find? So what happened? They were digging out the quarry and they just... The they well just, just appeared in just the face, appeared. the wall of the thing. So was saw. it rounded? Like a, yeah, just a well yeah. shape? And as they dug down, it, it collapsed. Oh. Wow. And then these things, which I didn't know what they were, but I've now oh. and found out that Dispensers they're of... enema tins. Oh, I just touched the pokey bit. <laughs> So you would have your rubber tubing. Oh, holy heck. And then a thing attached to the end for doing to go the, bit. the But bottom. it's also known as a douche for douching. Oh, it's wound. a douche. Oh, okay, right. I so, see. so there's the one bit of rubber tubing survived. Mm. Mm. And then there's a little clamp there. So you would attach that to there, your yeah. warm water in there, and a little and then that bit would of there. But I, I, I mean, even when I was a nurse, we didn't have anything like that. We just used a funnel and a bit of tubing. Yeah. Pour, pour the water. <laughs> yummy, yummy. Look at the jug. Oh, God, I love the jug because it's got the measures. Look at the See, inside. and I love the, all the rusting. It's, it's all part of making this yes. interesting this is object. This is really interesting, this stuff here. So did you see when I posted that? Yes, up, what and that I was? don't know what it is. Right, so what it is, I can't remember the name of it. A Zer Wimmel, Zer Wimmel. Is it's, it, wait, can I have a guess? Is yep. it to do with a gas thing where you knock yourself out for yes, an operation? Yes, it is. Does it go over your mouth? Chloroform. <gasps> they put chloroform in it. Did you really guess that? Yeah. Oh, my God. Do so you... I thought it was for boiling an egg or filtering oh. tea or something. I thought <laughs> that must have a mesh no, or something in it. I... No, it's for... But they put, yeah, a mesh in there and... And, and it goes them. over a mouth. Like and that. then they would put chloroform yeah. in it. And I thought, this is getting more... And then, of course, it's got on there British made... British make. Yeah. So, again, I didn't see that until I cleaned it. So this is the favourite piece. Because of the symbolic reference oh. of teapots. Because right. teapots are significant with making cups of tea, yeah. which is about conversation, yeah. talking, yeah. history. I mean, what history that teapot would have witnessed. You. There you go. So, so it that, the, it's all in the teapot, the history of all these objects. Yeah. And I've got to try and work out what they are. But so far, I'm... It's 1950s. Yeah. It's Nissen huts, but I do want to find out if the people that were housed in the Nissen huts Come were in. local or were they from London. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. So, did you say you did you find a record of them coming from London? So, or mm, no, someone wondering? mentioned it. Oh, right. So, I'm wondering if they were, but I've now got <clears> on <throat> chance to remember the group, you know, yeah. Facebook group people uh, who were born there, but their parents have since died. So it'd be lovely to find out someone's still alive who, that lived who there was as there from an adult, the... yeah, and where they were from. Wow, that teapot's very cool. So what I want to do with this collection, really? I've photographed everything, yeah, and I want to do a visual diary, and I think that will go on the front cover. That with the nice. yellow teapot. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely symbolic of the conversation. Yeah. That's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this quarry tour, the well finds and the look at Billy's studio. I'll be back again soon, down on the foreshore, to bring you another episode of Mudlarking with Old Father Thames. With that said, to play us out, please enjoy these final clips of a very special ancestral Thames landscape.